News at three minutes past six. Our next is at seven. Re-examining Kaylee on BBC Radio 2. It's been difficult the last few weeks with doing lots of interviews and I know it has to be mentioned, but for each person I have to mention it with, they don't understand that I'm talking about it all day. Celebrity does give way to a brand and, and I love the fact that I can have different strings to my bow. For some reason, when I listen to the album, it just seems easy. Hello, I'm David Tennant. Over the next hour or so, I'll be talking to Kylie Minogue about her life and her music. As she celebrates her 10th album, we'll be hearing some of the songs from X that undoubtedly you will be buying, downloading and listening to for years to come. But first, let's step back in time. So that was just, just some of the hits that have made Kylie Minogue one of the most successful pop stars in the galaxy. And she's sitting in front of me right now. Hi, Kylie. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, Radio 2 is ours now. It's ours, and he, and you look just perfectly at home behind this huge yeah. desk, which is not too dissimilar to the TARDIS. It's not, yeah, although these buttons actually work. Uh, right. These, most of these buttons aren't broken yet. But let's just mention, but, you know, for the for the radio <laughs> listening audience, they've covered them, so you don't actually... <laughs> they have covered them in plastic sheeting. Spill your coffee over them. <laughs> yeah, because the last time I was... You see on the, your side of the desk, there's a coffee stain there. That was mine. Oh, really? The last time I was on Radio 2. That's the, the amount of trust I'm engendering. Yeah. Okay. It's very nice to see you. Thank you, you for coming too. in to my show. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's your show. Uh, lots to talk about, and we're going to start with your new album, mm. X. X. Did we do X like that? Did we cross our arms? We can we do. It? Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> yeah, um, that brings a bit of family. Yeah, of course, it. family loyalty there. Yeah. yeah. So every time we say X, we will assume <laughs> a position. You can't see this at home, <laughs> listeners, but it's brilliant. So 13 new songs, and we're going to play quite a few of these through the show. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah you see. Mm. How would you describe the album? See, straight in there, with straight like, in like an interviewer. <laughs> well, it's it's still pop, obviously, but I've been saying in, in the landscape of pop, we have different views. Electro-pop, there's one track that's probably the most R&B-tinged pop that I've ever done. Some are buoyant, very camp-tastic numbers. You can. I know, what I are know. <laughs> and um And there's a couple of ballad-ish moments that are more personal to me. So I think we've run the gamut and it's all there. And it's been four years since your last album, Body Language. Yeah. For all sorts of reasons. I'm sure we'll talk about some later. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it says here, you have mm -hmm. said that making an album is like riding a bike. Did you ever say that? Who knows? I may have said that, meaning just getting back into the studio. Yeah. I had some trepidation this time going back in, although I was just so eager and excited to get back in the studio. Mm. I hadn't sung in such a long time. Anyway, when I got back in there, it was... It was. It did feel familiar. Familiar. It didn't feel too daunting. Mm. No, it was It was a, a lot of fun. Yeah. I actually went quite mad for a week. In a and, good way? In a good way. Did you have a, a concept in mind with this album? No. If I did, it would make my life a lot easier with interviews because I could say, this was, this is the way I did oh, it. The thing you said about the landscape I, was great. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. that sounds like a concept. <laughs> um, a few albums ago, when I did Light Years, I did have very specific words and, and channels for what I wanted to have in the album. But this one... I just wanted to get in the studio and see what happened. You know, just to do whatever. That's the fun, is going in the studio and having nothing. And at the end of the day, you've got this little... Like a being, a little friend, you yeah. know. So I just went in and let it develop as as time. Was it quite a release then, after four years away, to suddenly be in, sort of, playing again? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And the making of the songs was pretty carefree for me. You were in Scandinavia quite a lot. Yeah, I went With to... People um, who rejoice in the name of Bloodshot <laughs> and Avant. <laughs> yeah. Were they christened say, that? What, what, do, <laughs> what do I really call you, Bloodshot? Um, you didn't really... Did you actually have to call him Bloodshot? Uh, Surely he's really called... I didn't Paul have to. <laughs> Christian. Christian? Yeah, yeah. Well, still relatively sort of exotic. Although, with the Scissor Sisters, I do call Baby Daddy, Baby Daddy. 
Do you? Mm. Yeah, but I guess the Sizzle Sisters are, they're a whole other level of strange. <laughs> You've got to just get, well, in there, get yeah. on their planet. But even you? these people that have that kind of strangeness, for want of a better word, you know, once you're in the studio, they are really professional and just get down to it and are, are just yeah. absolute music lovers. And What about Cutfather? What's his real name? Uh, Cutfather. What is Cutfather's real name? She doesn't know. Um, She's so fickle, listeners, you know. No, she I'm just, these no, people. no, I was thinking it's... One day she's your pal, <laughs> next day she's forgotten all about you. I'm David, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't think what... <laughs> we'll I, I we'll dub it in Cut later. Father and JJ. Yeah. No, when he sends me an email, it is Cutfather. Did you call him Cutfather? Mm, I must have. <laughs> you must have, because you never seem to call him anything else. <laughs> but... <laughs> But was there something about being in Scandinavia? Do they different places sound make things sound different? No, not really. Not because studio of, is just a studio. It's a studio. Yeah. But because it's their studio, uh, when I worked with <laughs> Bloodshy and Avant, Christian and Jonas. Christian and Jonas, they yeah, are like are. best chums. We know their <laughs> names. <laughs> it's their setup, so it's it's that much quicker well let's have a listen to some of the songs shall we, uh, shall we? yeah come on come <laughs> on um what what can you tell me about wow wow i doesn't sound so good in a scottish accent <laughs> wow whoa <laughs> what wow. about australian wow wow tell me about wow oh righto <laughs> wow your broadest was... australian accent tell me about wow <laughs> no i wouldn't uh... <laughs> um wow was written in Ibiza with um, my co-writing partner, Karen Paul, who's worked on this album a lot, and right. Greg Kirsten, the producer. Right. So we all arrive at this lovely villa with 180 degree views of the sea. Fabulous. And I'd said, I'd really like to do a song that the title is Words That You Say Every Day. And I think Karen made a joke saying, yeah, like, wow, because we'd been saying wow about the view. Let's try to do a song called Wow, and we did. Let's hear it. Read my lips. That was Wow, <laughs> written by Greg Kirsten, Karen Poole, and Kylie Minogue, mm. who's sitting opposite me now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is your 10th album. It's called X, because it's your 10th, yeah. obviously. And uh, actually because it was it was called Magnetic Electric, which became an iTunes exclusive. Other uh, then we were services left... are available, BBC listeners. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um... The fans were apparently calling the album X online. I, I don't know if they did that because it's the 10th or because they, you or know, because they didn't a, know what it was called yet. But we thought that works. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And I love the fact it's just clean, simple. That's what it is. When you've had 10 albums, do you still get nervous about a new one coming out? Absolutely. But it must be a different type of nerves. I mean, it, must, it can't be the same sort of nerves when I should be so lucky it was coming out. I don't even know if I had nerves then. I, I, I didn't... You had the mad confidence of youth. No, I just didn't know what I was... I didn't understand the yeah. music industry. Yeah. And I'd just been dragged off the set of Neighbours <laughs> into the studio. <laughs> and the first song I did was number one. The second one was number one. And I think the more you know, the more realistic you are. And nerves are a part of that. Mm. I have to have the belief, and I do have the belief that that it's good, and I'm, I'm really proud, and I'm I'm ready for it to to come out. And there's that final part of, I mean, it's probably the same when you've done your Doctor Who episode. You've lived with it, you've mm -hmm. lived with it, you've done it, you've all done uh, done the best you can. And the final bit that irks you until it's out is the audience. That's yeah. what you've done it for, yeah, and that gives sure. you the sense of completion. Does that get harder the the older and wiser and the further to fall you've got, do you think? Well, yeah, on the one hand it does. On the other hand, I, I would hope, <laughs> and what I try to do to, to balance that is try to not stress so much. <laughs> I don't even like saying the word stress anymore. I just How do you manage I just say, try to try not to stress so much? What do you do? <sighs> it's not easy. It's not easy, is it? It's not. Life's a bitch and then and I go and spend album. three and a half weeks in Cardiff. Yeah, <laughs> come on. Just... <laughs> Just when my record company is saying, you're what? But I, well, well, we were, we'll talk about that later, but while we were shooting, you were in the middle of uh, whittling down the tracks, mm. weren't you? I remember mm. you, you had to sort of go off and have meetings with people, which I think you kept cancelling. <laughs> you were knackered, quite understandably. <laughs> it's long days shooting in Cardiff. It is. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Anyway, um, tell us about speakerphone. Play on your speakerphone. 
Well, that um, pretty much sums it up. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Speakerphone, very heavily produced track. Strange one to record because there's not a lot of room for personality with a capital P. Right. Um, it is what it is, and um, it's chopped up and, and affected in such a way that it becomes very cool. Very cool. Let's hear it. From Carrie Minogue's new album, X, that was speakerphone. Um, do you think that people might view you differently now? That you were diagnosed with cancer, that you, you're, you, you've made a recovery, and do you think it will alter public perception of you? I think it has. I mean, people, some people think of celebrities as being these <sighs> infallible, indestructible, not real, don't have feelings, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, and I don't know if, if, if some of us do that, then in a way you're doing you're doing your job well. But at at the base of it, we are all the same. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that that people can now. I mean, I don't know why they didn't before. And did you find did, did your fans and so on respond? Was that important and helpful? Oh, it was or? really really important. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that messages were saying, "We can't wait to see you back on yeah. stage." Uh, I had people stopping me in Paris and st people who would never have bought a Kylie record asking me when I'm touring next. <laughs> When's the next album? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I know. I'm walking around with a scarf on my head. I'm like, uh, well, y yes, um, yes, soon as I soon can. Soon as I've got the hair back, I'll be right with you. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's brilliant to see you sitting here looking so well today. Thank you. Let's talk about Cosmic. Yes. Because that uh, relates a bit to some of the things we've been talking about, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Um, I think I started writing that in Melbourne. Well, the best way to explain it, first line is I wanted to write a song called Cosmic. And I did. So already I have completion in that song <laughs> <laughs> after the first line. Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it, it's not, I suppose, what you're best known for, is it, Cosmic? It's, you know, you're, it's not high energy pop. No. Stomping. No, 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 it's not. But. I think the album would have been less of an album without those more personal moments I think on it. It's, it. it's a terrific track. Let's hear it now. Thank you. Mick written by Kylie and a man called Egg White. See, okay. You're not telling me that's his real name. <laughs> yes. He's not called Egg. That's what I called him. He that he was not. They didn't say I named this child Egg White. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. White went up to the vicar and went, no, we're going to call an egg. We think that's a great idea. All right, fair enough. It must be a nickname, but that's that's his name. Yeah. Do you remember what you called Cutfather yet? Um, I, well, yes. And I'd like to make up for my momentary lapse <laughs> before. Um, Mitch. Of course he's called Mitch. I know, I, I don't know why. That. <laughs> that was the most obvious thing on air. That's, you know. <laughs> So uh, obviously we, we we're not going to bang on about you being ill because it's been talked about everywhere and you you know uh, there's so much more to life. Well, but you've got there is. Yeah, but, go on. but I'll just say there's it's kind of um it's a tricky one because it's such a a deep subject for not only me but for a lot of people of course. that I I can't skim over it and I can't ignore it. So it's it's. It is tricky to, to yeah, talk about. But to it's find also the something right. deeply personal. Which exactly. Uh, was, was there a conscious decision to talk about that, to get it out there? Has that been therapeutic? It was, I think it was more inevitable. I mean, mm -hmm. it had to be mentioned. And it's been difficult the last few weeks with doing lots of interviews. And, mm -hmm. and it, I know it has to be mentioned. But for each person I have to mention it with, they don't understand that I'm talking about it all day. So of course. I mean, the. the you knew that you were going to have to endlessly go over this, I suppose, weren't you? Cause well, people for were now, know because this is... Were gonna, yeah. And it, it has played a big part in, in this album and mm. some of the songs where I, I address that. And, you know, it's it, I'm not that far from that period, from, from no, diagnosis, sure, so sure. It, anyone who's been through it will... They're probably listening at home now going... <laughs> I know what she's yeah, saying. It does take time to process all of, of that. Of course. But, but did that not make you a bit weary about coming back as soon as you did? No, because I was still and down for the period that I had to be. And then I don't think, for me anyway, beyond that, you don't sit and lie and wait until suddenly you feel better. You have to get back. And, mm. and for some people that means ditching their job going to India or, you know, adopting yeah. a new lifestyle. Yeah. But for me, it was quite 
reassuring that what I wanted to do was come back and do my job. And that was a, a therapy in itself, I suppose. Yeah. It? Yeah, of course. Do, uh, do you think your music has changed as a result? I, I think my delivery has. For some reason, when I listen to the album, although there's there's different vocal delivery depending on the on the track, but it feels very um, at ease for me. And oh, right. I mean, it's probably something no one else would would notice because I can hear all every intonation in my voice. It just seems the recording was easy. Does he think you're you're a better singer as a result? Uh, yeah, I think I am. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean. I think what has made me a better singer is is touring, where you just have no choice. You better get your act together. Right. Um, and having just come off that tour... You've got the lungs of an ox. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Stars. I think Stars was in my first recording session with, wait for it, Biff. Who's Biff now? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Biff. character in Death of a Salesman. You're called Doctor Who, your <laughs> alter ego. You can't talk. He's called the Doctor. Have you learnt nothing? <laughs> Biff is Richard. Why is he called Biff for crying oh, out loud? Oh, look, I don't know. Egg, <sighs> Biff, cut father. You're going to have to rename yourself Toaster Rack or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Toast We're just going to get Toaster Rack in. Yeah. yeah. Punch out a few tunes. Um... What on earth am I talking about? You're stars. Talking about stars. Uh, stars from your new album, written, X. <laughs> no available. Stars was written at shops. that time. Uh, sometimes when when I write, I mean the words just come out, and and I'm not exactly it's a, sure what I'm writing about. But then now looking back at the lyrics to Stars, I was clearly still searching and being thankful that stars don't shine in singular places. So what I was talking about is through my illness I saw stars in in or saw light or saw laughter love in places different to where you might expect them so you know the darker it is the brighter the stars shine stars uh, co-written by your good self Kylie Minogue uh, I'm David Tennant. We're in Radio 2. I think I have to say that every now and again. Yeah, these people yeah. have just tuned in. And I'm thinking, who are these two rabbit on a lot of old rubbish? <laughs> we have rubbish. I mean, the music's good, but who are they? <laughs> so we've talked We've talked about Cosmic and we've talked about Stars. Mm. Would I be right in suggesting that No More Rain has a similar theme? Similar theme, yeah. absolutely. Um, no More Rain... Uh, I wrote... The chorus for that in um, Melbourne, and it was when I was just thinking about getting back on stage, and I was trying to project what it might be like. I wasn't assuming anything. I wasn't assuming I could, in fact, do it, but what it might be like to be back on stage, hence um, the lines in the, in the chorus. And that had been hanging around in my scrappy notebook for quite a while until I was in Sweden with Bloodshy and Avant and Karen Poole and we just finished working on, on, on another track and uh, Karen and I head to the couches okay let's see if we can what else have we got we're both flipping through notebooks and I came across No More Rain and oh what do you think about this one and I, I just rediscovered it and, and said I Actually, this would be really great if we could do it because this means a lot to me. And so then we we um, wrote the rest of the track there. Let's hear it. No more rain. What can you tell us about Sensitized? <laughs> Sensitized is written by Guy Chambers, mostly famous for his uh, collaborations with Robbie Williams. Sure. Kathy Dennis, mostly known for "Can't Get You Out of My Head." And I've I've worked both with both of them independently b before, but this track has apparently been about five years in the making. It started with Guy using two samples from Serge Gainsbourg, the French icon of music. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> from BB. So I think he he built a track around those samples. They apparently wrote one song over it weren't too happy with that, changed it, 
had to get permission from the, the Gansborg Foundation. It's from Bonnie and Clyde, is from, that right? From Bonnie and Clyde, yeah. yeah. And I saw Guy Chambers at an event and he'd said to me, I've got a song for you. <laughs> I was like, okay, where is it? Yeah, he said, yeah well, when you're ready. Yeah, and it was a few months after that, even still, that uh, before I heard the track. And Anyway, it's quite steamy, hot, and uh, unusual for me, that the, um, the sound of it, but it is cool. That was sensitised. I'm David Tennant. We are examining Kylie here on Radio 2. Ooh. I'm sitting opposite me now. It's Ooh. the pint-sized pop princess herself. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Have you found anything? <laughs> I don't know. <gasps> well, it's called X X M X. Did you see? Did you get that? I got that. Yeah, it's clever, isn't it? Okay, so everything you do tends to end up in the papers, which must, I would have thought, get a little exhausting. Or everything I don't do. Or everything you don't do, <laughs> quite. Yeah. I mean, I've been a bit well-known for a few years now, and mm. there are moments when it's quite exhausting. You've been proper famous for about 20 years. Hmm. Do you never want to just go, oh, sod this? I, I do, sometimes. Yeah. Just want to head out that door looking in a right state. Yeah. Well, like you have done today. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. How do you decide I mean, what's off limits? How do you how do you draw those boundaries? In your uh, well, uh, some of them have to be in my mind. I mean, I love the fact that my sister's here and she's doing so well now, and that it's kind of a nice feeling that in the public eye I have family as well, and that's just become more so the last however many months she, she's been doing X Factor. It's, it's different for someone like me because I play a part and that's mm. what I sort of publicise is that part. And mm. then I've got my own life which is different from that. But uh, you are, well, you are your own, to use a terrible PR word, you are your own brand, aren't mm. you? And well, you've helped me to give an answer to that. I knew early on that if you're in the public eye and you, you are known as yourself, mm. then logic says, well, reason says, part of your you know people are interested in in your private life so i've always allowed some of that you know there is a gray area mm. but behind that i've got the safety knowing that my real real private life is endless no one can touch that no quite difficult to safeguard those boundaries sometimes or are you quite good at knowing uh, where public you starts and um no it, it's it is so yeah sometimes it's difficult mm. yeah now, answer this question very carefully. Mm. Why would you, Kylie Minogue, want to come to Cardiff <laughs> to work with BBC Wales and be in Doctor Who? Because Doctor Who is a legendary show. Yeah, 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 but maybe more about the people you might be working with. I I, I'll get to that. Okay, I'm just, fine. You know, yeah, sure, one. sure, sure. No, obviously answer the question in any way that you see fit. Um, the leading man, DT. Sure. Oh, the you, Doctor. Oh, you don't have to say that. It's really, that. I mean, all others pale in comparison. Oh, and, listen, sure. And had I been asked to do Doctor Who mm. some years back, mm. frankly, I might have said no. You might have done. You, you know? know? I mean, so, I'm not saying anyone would have blamed you. You're an asset, you're a draw card. Oh, and oh. And you were in all honesty, amazing and so much fun to work with and you made it really oh, easy. But now I am embarrassed. <laughs> uh, were you a fan of the show or did you watch it before? When you were growing up? Let's talk about you for a minute. <laughs> David. We don't have to do that. We do. The doctor. Yeah. Took very good care of me. Good. Yeah. Well, you, you know, we were delighted to have you. It was Thanks. Very nice. All right. All right. Back to me then. Yeah, back to you. Come on. Uh, had you watched? <laughs> he wasn't warming to that. No. Uh, is it, I'm the one asking the questions. All right. Okay. Right? <clears throat> back in your box. Now, they they had it in Australia, right? When yep. you were growing up. Yep. Yeah. Were you very aware of it? Wobbly sets, cardboard, alfoil. Well, yeah. Yeah. Loved it. But you weren't a big fan, were you? I'm. I wasn't an uber fan, as in fanzines, mm. as in. Um, conventions yeah but new enough to be interested but i met the chief writer russell t davies and, and producer julie gardner and i fell in love with them both instantly and just thought you guys are like us we're, we're going to get along along famously and this would be a lot of fun and a good step back into acting and was it nice to come back into something where i mean obviously you're a, you're a very central part of it but it's not again it's not all about Kylie as Kylie. You I get to just be part of the gang. I loved it. I loved it. That was the epiphany for me. Uh, uh, in the trailer, day one, you rolled in late. 
learning your lines at the last minute. Yeah, sure. No, not really. <laughs> so there's a long trailer with yourself, some of the other guest cast for that episode, extras coming in and out, and me in yeah. the middle. And yeah. I, I, yeah, we I like felt to bring like, you down to our level. Yeah, I know. Day one. <laughs> I felt I'm in my spiritual home. This is TV trailer, and it it's about everyone and being able to sign off on myself in the mirror as Astrid mm. not as Kylie and is this the right look for my next album or is this good for da, 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 da. no it was just so liberating and, and wonderful and uh, I just I loved it I had a ball so tell us about, about Astrid who, who, who is she what does she do she's a, a a waitress on the spaceship Titanic mm -hmm. and she is very much alone dreams of traveling um meets the doctor is intrigued by him and they get along very nicely yeah there's a certain kindred spiritness between them isn't there there we go uh, thank you sir i can manage i never said you couldn't i'm the doctor by the way astrid sir astrid peth nice to meet you astrid merry christmas merry christmas sir just doctor not sir you enjoying the cruise yeah, I suppose. I don't know. You don't quite work a cruise on your own. You're not with anyone? No, no, just me. Just, uh... Used to be, but, uh... No. Uh, do you think you... Do you fancy doing a bit more acting? Was this... Is this... Is this a return to acting as a one-off? Or do you think you might... Ooh. It was a great reminder that that's what I started doing and that's mm. what I do, because... Um... Well, because we should see <laughs> that on set, in the next studio next door... It was only Jim Robinson. <laughs> I know. I know. Jim Robinson. Alan, Alan Dale. Dale. Alan Dale. We must. We must. Of course, I know. But uh, but yeah, you, you were reunited with with uh, with, uh, with with Jim, Jim Robinson. Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I would love to act more. Um, I I got a little nervous from making bad decisions and acting in the wrong vehicles, but doing Doctor Who was. It was just so comfortable and and as I said, it was like a, like a, my spiritual home. Yeah, I love the I love the feeling of being on set and and um, Pam doing my hair and makeup and yeah. she's been doing BBC for God knows how many years and yeah. it's just it really is a different atmosphere to the fashion world and and music. I love them all, but I don't spend so much time in the acting world. It's so, a bit of a shame that Astrid meets such a grisly end in the uh, in, well, the, in the end of Christmas special. Like, yeah. it doesn't it's grisly, it, but it's pretty. Like beautiful, <laughs> sure. But it probably doesn't leave the door open for you to to come back. But oh, it's science fiction. We could we could piece you back together. Hey, even in Ramsey Street, people have gone and come back. <laughs> Are they always playing? And by that's the a same neighbourhood person? street. Yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. I yeah, hope, I hope it opens about. doors to do other things. Yeah, you're floating around the galaxy in a little blue blob, aren't you? <laughs> so that we could, you know, you could be Not reanimated. A blue blob. It's a piece of stardust. Sparkles. Sparkles. That sparkles of stardust. A blue blob. It's a blue Bobbing blob. around the universe. But, yeah. you know, it's a very pretty blue blob, I'm sure. So you travel a lot? All the time. Just for fun. Well, that's the plan. Never quite works. Must be rich, though. I haven't got a penny. Stow away. Kitty. Seriously? No. Oh, yeah. How'd you get on board? Accident. I've got this sort of chip thing. I was just rebuilding a... Left the defences down. Bumped into the Titanic. Here I am. Bit of a party, I thought. Why not? I should report you. Go on, then. I'll get you a drink. are doing so well i'm really impressed yeah yeah it's all gonna go wrong now um so let's get back to your new album mm. x um uh, we're gonna play the track the one which is probably of all of everything on the album is maybe most like old school kylie isn't it? old sure? school club pop yeah bit of retro it's good to have a a no-brainer sure That's and it. here it is <laughs> the one it's very classic pop but but then We've got All I See, which is 
your kind of your R and B number. Yeah, yeah, really unusual for me. Um, that was a a last minute uh, addition mm -hmm. to the album, and apparently there were some other more R and B um, inclined artists who were all wanted that song. Oh, really? But for some reason. I got it, which is because great. you're kind of an old. Of course you did. Mm. I'd give it to you. That's the. You, of course you'd get all the R and B tracks. Well, it was fun. Let's hear it. This is Cutfather again, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mitch, I know him as Mitch. <laughs> all I see, kind of an old goes R and B. That kind of rhymed. Um, now you picked up Q Magazine's Icon Award and the Music Industry Trust Award recently. Mm. Getting these awards, these titles, all this stuff—is it, it? How important Trust is it? And uh, I know, thanks. And it, it's really important to be recognised by the industry, especially considering I, when I started, I really wasn't taken that seriously at all. So that's something I have had to to work on and build over twenty years now. <laughs> um, but you're still only 26, so that's brilliant. Well, I did start young. <laughs> no, yeah. you did start very young, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that means a tremendous amount to me. Yeah, well, very congratulations. proud. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's have another track. Tell me about Like a Drug. Like a Drug. Um, another Mitch and JJ track. Recorded this a while ago. Of course, it's not about drugs. <laughs> but love being like a drug. Sure. <laughs> Kylie Minogue does yeah. not condone the taking of <laughs> recreational drugs. Let's hear the song. We're examining Kylie with me, David Tennant. So, Kylie, you've done sort of everything. You're, you've got your own underwear range. Mm. Are you wearing Kylie pants just now? Probably. I certainly am. <laughs> um, you've, you've written a children's book. You've had a squillion albums and everything. You've got the UK Music Industry Trust presented you with an award, and I quote... This is why you got it. It wasn't for your pants. It was in recognition of your universally acclaimed status as an icon of pop and style. <laughs> yeah. Achieved over a 20-year career, which has seen you reinvent, experiment and inspire. Ah. Oh, Brilliant, isn't it? Isn't that so, fabulous? Well, are you going to continue reinventing, experimenting and inspire? <laughs> or are you just going to rest on your laurels now? That <laughs> What's next? Um, What's next for Kylie Minogue? Well, next year... I have some homewares, would you believe? What do you mean? Like, um... Like pots and things? No, uh, no, 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 I haven't made it to pots. What, curtains? <laughs> Not curtains. No. Bed... Bed spreads. Bed linens, throws, cushions, da-da-da-da-da. Mm. You know, it seems like... I could like... do with some new... Could uh, you? Movie covers. Would you send me some samples? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, you can have leopard print... Wow. I mean, come on, let's let's in, inject a bit of fun. You're the new Martha Stewart. Uh, well, see? Yes. Don't get arrested. <laughs> ever you do. No, no. But there's projects, I mean, with the book and lingerie and perfume, all of those things, I think that celebrity today does give way to a brand. And, and I love the fact that I can have different strings to my bow. Mm. They just keep me occupied, <laughs> for one thing. Yeah. I love the fact that there's music, music, music. Oh, perfume amazing. I love it. Like, what are we going to do for the next yeah. perfume? I like to have a few pots on the boil. You're a force of nature, Kylie. Well, It's been sometimes. lovely to have you in. <laughs> You're a lovely lady. Always lovely to see you. Thanks, and, and uh, you. Thank you, for, thank you for answering my inane questions all this time. Uh, we're going to play out with a bit of an exclusive. Don't you know? This is the studio version of White Diamond. Yes! Yeah. Uh, and White Diamond was written with the Scissor Sisters, right? That's right. Jake Shears yeah. and Baby Daddy. And that's, that's, obviously that's on their birth certificate. Sure. Um, could be. It might be. <laughs> Should be. Yeah. Do they wear mad clothes in the studio? Or are they just like in t-shirt and dungarees? Um, not so mad in the studio. Yeah. But if Jake and I are going to a function together, he will want to coordinate outfits. <laughs> and I will never forget going to one of Elton John's White Tine Tiara balls and um, Jake was there. Uh, we were up in one of the rooms of the house getting ready. He comes up and you know, he's wearing this 
striped I think he did end up wearing it, a striped suit that's like maroon and kind of gold and he's fluffing up his collar and looking in the mirror with gold boots on sure. and says you know I, I just don't want I just don't want to look like a clown <laughs> I was like okay you are talking to yourself in the mirror <laughs> Not looking too dissimilar to a clown. Yeah. You don't have a red nose. Sure, but you do have that. Boots. But you do have this suit on. So, of course, he, he loves a dress up, and I love him for that. Yeah. And you're not shy of a dress up yourself. Well, that's no, true, though. So, yeah. yeah. Kylie, it's been lovely. It has been lovely. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. I know that it's